Hi, everybody. This is Biz Chicks TV. This is the place where you can find tips and tools to help you do business better. We're here to help you run a profitable business that's fun to run and to take the hassle out of your hustle. And today is Money Mindset Day with Coach Karen Fern, all the way from Toronto, Canada. I'm Tara Lena from California Cover Ups, and I want to give a big shout out to my partner, Miss Francine Gregory, real estate entrepreneur and tech diva who is producing this show for us in the background. So I want to welcome everybody. I'd like you to sit back, relax, get a pencil and pen because Coach Karen is going to share some nuggets with us to help us get our business mind together. How you doing this morning, Coach? I'm doing fabulous. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. <laughs> uh, happy winning Wednesday to whoever joined us live and our weekly show. Well, we are just excited to hear what you have for us today. So what are we talking about today, Coach? So today we're talking about starting over or a refresh. And we're going to look at phase one in that. Because last month, if you didn't join us, you want to go look at those um, videos on the district group. OK, and we really talk about really honing in on what you know and what you don't know and learning. it. And we want to have no blame and no shame happening. So we want to start over fresh, drop all the garbage behind anything that was weighing you down. And let's look at the second half of the year and bring us to this great place. So when 2020 hit, you'll be feeling really good. You're going in great. January is a really hard month, okay? And mm -hmm. most people feel really bad. But if you did all the work, you are not too worried in January. And let's say you have a program you want to, you know, work on, you can advertise it for February. But you have enough. Here's the other thing. I want you to have enough income to move you over to the new year. That, that's my goal. So if you take this other seven, second half really seriously and work, you work, you, you will see results. And today we're talking about phase one, phase one of a program that I'll have coming out called the four hour work day, because mm -hmm. I really want to showcase to you that you don't need to spend 14 to 16 hours per day running the show. Now, initially you'll spend quite a few hours, but our job is to focus and really dissect to see where our time is spent, both personal and in our businesses, so that we can bring it down to that. <laughs> okay, to bring it down to this number. Listen, when you first do it, you're going to want to figure out what else you're supposed to be doing because it's only four hours. <laughs> well, I think that, you know what, when we schedule things and we actually stick to the schedule, we really can't get it done in four hours. I think the yes. reason drags out because we stop to do laundry yes. we stop to help with homework we're cooking which and it just goes on and on at the end of the day we haven't done what we could have done in those four hours right exactly exactly <laughs> exactly so i want you to pay attention i want you to focus and the number one rule that i have for you if nothing more is to stop self-sabotaging because we're all really geniuses at it <laughs> we can do it like nobody's business okay and we can find the excuse that suit what we're doing easily we pull those tricks out of our hats like real easy and i wanted to just stop it because before anybody can do anything to you you have done it to yourself and i want you to not do it i want you to not do it so number one is really self Stop the self-sabotage. And that's one of the things we're really going to look at in the program. So you're getting a taste for the next couple of weeks of what the program will entail. And today, I really wanted to look at phase one to, to really show you what happens and what's going on. And when I say self-sabotage, I really mean what are you doing with yourself? Case in point. If your program is to get up, if your schedule, your consistency, accountability you're supposed to be doing is to rise early in the morning and you went to bed late, you are not getting up early in the morning. Now, I know, and people have told me, I can wake up anytime, even if I went to bed at one, I can still get up at five. It doesn't bother me. Oh, today it might not, but by the end of the week it will, because your body will just be tired. It will be tired and you can't function. And so you have to have a good night's rest. And here's what's going to happen. Your mind is going to tell you 
that it's not important. And you have to rebuttal and say, yes, it is. Eating right, exercising, and rest is the three most important things to run in my business properly, consistently, so I can bring money and I can put them in my pocket. Profits I'm talking about, my pay, so I can run my personal life, so I can elevate my business life. So those are the things you really want to pay attention to. And those, those are some of the things we're going to be covering. And we're going to work through them. We're going to go through nighttime routine. Why would I want to teach that in a program? Because it's important. If you take showers, you take a shower. If you take baths, you take your bath. And then you get a cup of tea if, if tea soothes you, if not a glass of milk or a cup of glass of water. And you read a boring book, nothing that is exciting. Nothing that's going to make you want to be inquisitive enough to get up and go research or write anything. No, a boring book or just quiet music or meditation or prayers, whatever it is that works for you, but something that brings you down. It's like if you're exercising, you stretch first and then you do your workout and then you stretch again. You bring down your heart rate and that's what you're really doing. You're getting yourself calm. Now, when you first try this, it's going to be hard. I am not here to lie to you. I'm very plain and straightforward. It's going to be hard, but you're going to do it hard until you get to the place where it's easy. And you're going to have to do it. Just give me seven days of understanding the process and then doing it. And even if you're feeling resistance to it, you're going to fight through the resistance. Now, if you have children, things are going to happen. If you have a husband, things are going to happen. If you got friends that call upon you, yes, they're going to call upon you. Your job is to set everything in place and really have answers for them. Kids, we're going to bed earlier tonight, okay? If you need anything, here's a glass of water. That's all you can have. You can't call out to mommy. If it's really young kids, if you just have a, had a baby, it's a different scenario. But you're still going to find ways. And I'll tell you, because I'm um, one of my businesses was to teach people how to um, train their kids from the time they come home from the hospital. I would work with parents until the kids are three months to four months. OK, and I'll set programs for the people so that they can have good rest. Their partner and them could really look after their kids and they don't feel harder throughout the day. Yes, that was something I used to do and I charge good money for it. <laughs> and people pay me for it because mm -hmm. they knew how good it was. It was a word of mouth business and that was it. A friend recommended me and I was never out of business. I just closed it off, I think it was last year. And this year people were still pounding me down and saying, I can't believe you're closing the program. Why would you do that? Because I'm focusing on other things right now. But you got to program yourself. You got to be consistent and you really have to set answers. Your mind will tell you all that you can do. And when it's not working, it'll find people that will come and tell you what you can do or tell you you're trying to do too quickly. That's not what we're doing here. It's not too quickly. But they will facilitate the quickness because you're feeling it already. So these new people are coming in to give you the strength that, yes, you're right. Okay? So you want to pay attention to your mind and mm -hmm. what it's telling you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I, I heard two things. I heard I can have a four-hour work day mm -hmm. and I get to power down at night. Yes. All righty then. <laughs> I just talked to, to some ladies the other day, and one was saying she's up at two in the morning working on her business. And I was explaining to her, this is not healthy. Mm -mm. And you can't be functioning at your best when you're getting up at seven. So you're getting up at seven, you're going to bed at two. And how many hours of sleep are you really getting? Do you ever really get to the, to the REM sleep? You know, when your body gets a chance to regenerate its cells, because that's exactly. when full regeneration occurs. Exactly. So exactly. it's not sustainable. It's just not sustainable. My daughter had to go to a sleep clinic, clinic and I had to uh, for a week and then for another four days. So I had a really chance to sit at the desk with the, with the technicians and watch what happened when we sleep. I mean, you know, some experience just brings you closer to understanding things. It was a joy to. 
it was scary to me to see certain things and then it was a joy once the technician explained all the different realm and what you need and why it's important and what it does to the body if it doesn't get it so people rest is so important it is so important yeah, and i think people think rest is a waste of time yeah Can you speak to that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the planning rest yes. and training are wastes of time yes yes and if you don't plan you take longer to do something if you don't rest you don't get that renewed energy to focus focus is a big problem to focus so that you can do something <laughs> training oh my gosh you want to train so that you know what to do you put an inexperienced cleaner in a room and they'll take an hour you put a trained cleaner in and she will take 20 minutes because she's well trained That's I, thank you so much because people really do not understand the value now if we take that 40 minutes and we break it down into dollars and cents that meant they could do three rooms in the time it takes them to do one thank you Thank you. Thank you. you understand what and I think we just really have to when we're when we're talking to people about um, signing up for training or taking training or being participating in training, we really should break it down in dollars and cents so that they understand the value. Exactly. Okay. So Terry, just bring it up. So I'm gonna talk right into dollars and cents about it. You know, imagine you are charging $35 an hour or $60 an hour for a Pacific something, whatever that something is. And you came in and you give an estimate. And that's the reason why, even though I start off teaching people how to make money by the hour, I really put people into projects. I rather projects. Same with this program. This program is going to teach you how to block time off versus by the hour. So you're going to do a chunk of thing in a certain time frame with tiny breaks in between so you can actually see it done. So if you were part of your stuff was doing a chapter in a book, you'd be writing that chapter in the book. And for that chunk of time, it would be the chapter in the book, maybe a workbook and whatever. Okay, I'll get back to that later. All right, so let's talk about dollars and cents here. If you, and we can use my cleaning business as a for instance, if I came to a house and I said, you know, to clean this house is $140, and you start checking yourself, it's four hours to clean the house, right? It is four hours to clean the house, but if an experienced cleaner come in, they'll clean the house in two and a half hours. Do you see what kind of money your business would make? Because you're still going to charge the $140. You're still going to pay your people whatever per hour or per percentage you had agreed upon when you hire them. Your company's going to make more money. Your salary, salary should stay the same because you don't need to make more money than your salary. If you're taking a salary or you're doing different, depending on what you're doing in your business, everybody's different. You don't want it to change because you really want a business to make money. You don't necessarily want you to make as much money. I know sometimes, I shouldn't say I know, but people, I've dealt with a lot of people who don't understand this. But the reason you want your business to make more money than you do, yes? And here is why. Most of the things and the expenses you're going to pay out of your business if you set it up right. So you don't need that amount of money to have as your own, number one. Number two, when you go to do other things outside of running this business nine to five or five days a week, you're in your business going to showcase that it's making enough money, A, in case you want to sell it, B, if you want to start investing in property or other businesses, you want to have this for that purposes. You don't want to only think short term. We're back to what Terry asked about, the planning, you know, the training and knowing these things that you need to know. So you see all of a sudden that if a room was going to take $35 for the room and you finish it in 20 minutes, I want you to just do the math right now and understand how much it really costs. This is not you trying to rob the, the um the client or anything. No, it's you running your business efficiently because mm -hmm. you pay for staff, you are paying for insurance, at least we have to, you paying for the training that you give the staff initially, and just the general running of the business. Where does that money come from? If you don't understand how to use your time wisely, you, you can't run a successful business. <laughs> oh my goodness. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> I mean, people just need to understand. That yeah. they're saving money when they invest in training and in being focused. Yes, yes. This time around, when I hire people, I mean, I said, like, no, I want to do it. This time when I hire people, they have to take a cleaning class first. It's a free class. 
they have to take a cleaning class and once they're trained, then they get employed. Now, if they want to move up the ranks, they have to pay. And the reason I'm allowing them to pay because it's their education, because it showed me they want to grow. That money is going to come back to them, but it's the initiative, it's the movement. And this is from experience. And you have to learn as you grow your business. You can't stand still. If you're making these earrings, if all you did was make these earrings, and you haven't learned what you need to do from this, you need to get out of the earring business. You need to make the earrings. You need to get a manufacturer who's going to eventually make the earrings. Then you need to find a manufacturer where you're going to manufacture your stones for your earring. You're cutting costs all the while so your business could be more profitable. You're supposed to grow this way. Mm -hmm. All right. So I went off a little bit, but <laughs> when you get me in the money realm, I really go off. <laughs> And we're not there yet. We're at phase one and we're talking about self-sabotaging. We're mm -hmm. talking right now today about the mind and the things we do to ourselves that let us not go forward. So if you didn't cool down in the night, you're not doing great in the day. Okay. So that's a form of self-sabotage. That's a form of self-sabotage. Okay. Gotcha. Right. <laughs> and if you sit down and you said that I was going to write a blog and it's going to take me half an hour. You're supposed to come to the com computer with the research done already so you can actually write the blog. You're not coming for half an hour, a chunk of time with going and research and coming back and writing. It's not going to be done in half an hour. The blog is not going to get done. You're going to put it off. By Wednesday, you're still writing the same blog because you have given yourself permission that it's just once a week I'm writing the blog. So why do I need to finish it on Monday? Because you said so. That's why. You said so. So then part of the planning should include time for research. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You have to. Like part of this program, you're going to learn how to batch your graphics for your blog. You're going to learn how to batch your content, how to match your content with your graphic, how you're going to take this content and how many places you're going to use it. How are you going to tweak it, take off, put on for the different places? And why are you doing it? Not because you randomly want to post something. Now, given if you went out and you had a good time and you see some flowers, and you talk to a few people, you went to a show, great, post it. But you should be able to take some element from that and use it for your business and tie it back together. That's how, first of all, you build your content. And second, how you grow the people that follow you so that you can turn this into what it is you want it to be. You have to. This is important stuff. This is all the stuff before you run an ad. This is the stuff before you go pay money for stuff. This is your time that you need to build into your business so you can really watch it start off and grow. Really and truly, that's why we're starting over and we're refreshing. So if you didn't do it well, if you didn't understand what you needed to do, you're coming in and you're getting it done. We're not only looking at your avatar and who is your, you know, your sole client. We're really working on you because when you work on you, you're going to find your sole client. She's going to be attracted to you because she's you when you're starting. <laughs> she is you. She's the you now that's going to evolve into the higher you that you really want to be. You're really selling her the idea of the person you see yourself as. That's what you're selling. Every person that I've ever bought from me had seen me where I was going. I wasn't there yet, but they saw me there already. They saw me there, and I had to live up to that expectation. And I was happy that I had to live up to that expectation. So everything I did, wouldn't believe it, everything I did from a tiny apartment, every single thing I did, it was to the highest esteem, the highest I never did anything mediocre. It was really, I put my blood, sweat, and tear in it. And if I made a mistake, I correct, self-correct until it was great. And because I was working at this high place, there's all these people who came in and celebrate what I was offering and just wanting to give me, gift me things, gift me things. And that's what you'll find start happening to you. People want to come and gift you things when you're working to your highest standard. And that's also the people you'll attract to sell to. All right. 
Any questions? You guys no, are we're good so far. Thank you. All right. So now we've worked a little bit on the mind. You understand what we're going to be doing there. Let's talk a little bit. Uh, take a look at the instant boost for you. And boosting your confidence, right? Because we talk about a lot of things that you have to adjust to. It's going to be uncomfortable. You might not want to do it. Let's talk about how we get you boosted by making your first sale. Your first $10 sale, your first $100 sale. Yes, I know people make thousands of dollars, but we're talking about you starting over. So you might be starting at a $10 sale. Don't knock your small beginnings. You might be starting at a $10 sale. That's okay. That's okay because you're going to feel good when you make your first 10 bucks. You're going to feel good when you make your first 50 bucks, your first hundred dollars. You're going to feel good. And with that feeling, I want you to take it now and make sure your customer is feeling good. Make sure that you're treating them really well so that they want to come back and they want to tell a couple of other people. There's nothing wrong with you calling them up a couple of days and saying, did you enjoy my service? Would you recommend me? Do you know two or three people who would be interested in what I have? They might not know right away. And you said, you know, can I call you back in a couple of days? Keep it going. And don't only call them back on the sale. Call them to find out how they're still enjoying what you had to offer. Some people might not have used your stuff yet. Don't be offended by it. They're just busy. Don't be offended by it. Just look forward to what you have done. The only way you have to feel that is if you didn't do a good job and not because you couldn't but because you didn't know if you didn't know there's no bad thing but if you knew you could have done a, a better job then you fix it you fix whatever it is that wasn't done well and i'm a quick fixer i fix it either by giving them something back in return um returning what they had that wasn't good to me because you can't be in business and you've never failed in that sort of way that just happens this is just part of being in business this is not to knock you it's not to put you aside it just happens okay you just correct it and that's it nobody's holding you hostage once you correct it people are upset when you don't want to correct it when you even if that person is trying to swindle you you don't worry about that God will take care of that you don't worry about that you just go right ahead and you do what it is you're supposed to do Years ago, my business, my first business was food. A friend was asking me the other day, I said, she's talking about um, home economic classes and it's out of the school and what have you. And I said, you know, home economics class is responsible for half of my successes I had in my birth country, Guyana, because everything they taught me, I turned it into a business. I turned it to part of my business. So it was a really good four years in high school going to home economics. While other people was upset about it, I was happy. It was putting money in my pocket. And so yeah. I made a lot of mistakes. I did a lot of things that wasn't done well, but I self-correct. And I'll go to my teachers. I'll tell them what I'm doing. And they were happy to help me because they see that I'm putting forth my all. And that's what you have to do. Whether you're doing alterations, whether you're sewing, whether you're a hairdresser, if you're a coach like I am, if you're a mentor, even if you tell somebody something to do and they're not getting the results, don't go feeling bad. Ask what they're doing, what they're thinking. Like try to figure out how you help them. And you go back and you go back until you do. This is not a place where you just run and hide. No, no, no. You have to correct, right? You have to. Mm -hmm. If you're a writer, you know, whatever you do, whatever is your profession, there are going to be times when things are happening in your personal life that is setting you off to not do as well as you can. Take a breather and go back and have a look. Just correct. Mm. Just self-correct. You also gonna feel good as another boost. When you self-correct and people notice, you're gonna feel good. Everybody loves a compliment. <laughs> I like that. Instead of continuing down the same road and sabotaging yourself, self-correct. Don't be yeah. afraid to um, listen to criticism mm -hmm. and use it constructively. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. You have to. You have to, I used to do, when I worked one, I used to do um, cross stitch. And as I told you guys, I worked for six sixty eight an hour, $6 and 68 cents. And my colleagues were making anyway from 12 to 17, $18 an hour in the same space. I was new, okay? <laughs> and that's what I was starting with. And I was making $25 an hour 
within a couple of months because I was like, what is my side gig? <laughs> What's my side hustle? Okay. And I was introducing free food and everybody liked it. And then I would take an order and then I would sell my food. And I also had bought a cross stitch um, kit. And I, I didn't know to do cross, not doing embroidery, hand embroidery, but not cross stitch. And I taught myself. And in my spare time, people see me doing it. They loved it. And I started getting ordered. The first order was $15. By the time, in, in 90 days, I was I had an order for $175. Let me tell you, I did a wedding gift out of cross stitch and just framed it, macrame and cross stitch together. It was a combination. And the girl said, "Give me, do whatever you need to do because it's a wedding gift and I want it to be fabulous. And I did. And I charged her $175 <laughs> and she paid it. And can I tell you how many clients I get after that? Because people were just crazy stunned of what I can do with macrame and cross stitch. And it was a gift like no other. So, and it, yes, it was a keepsake. Yes. So I give my gift to her. I think in less than two weeks, she was like, kind of got 12 orders for you. Everybody that saw the gift won. If not that big, they wanted something. I was so yeah. busy. <laughs> Between that and food, I was making some serious coins. Okay, but what I did was I learned. See, we're going back into training. I taught myself what to do. I went with the pattern they gave me, and then I came up with my own as I go along. And if I made a mistake, I wasn't afraid to go back in, take it apart, take my time, and actually work it. I mean, back to front, everything was so neat that you can't believe that somebody sat down and did it with their hands. So nobody's questioning because I took my time. Mm -hmm. I took my time and I get done. So the first set of pieces that I sold didn't maybe make me any big of a profit, probably like a two, five bucks, I think about $10. It didn't make me a big profit. But what I did after that brought me in the big profits. You've got to really allow small beginnings. You just have to. My book, Little Dribbles, will tell you about that. You've got to allow small beginnings. Because that is what's going to lead you into anything big. If you start big, you're going to lose a lot fast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You really, our, ourselves as human beings, we can stand to lose little dribbles. But anything big, it really sink us. You got to be. <laughs> I mean, anybody who can withstand losing a lot has lost little. Anybody who can withstand things now has understand hard times have been there. Mm -hmm. Some people want to stay there. But if you're willing to grow, you have to have lost. If you're willing to do well, you're going to lose. Things are going to happen to you. Bad things are going to happen to you. Yes, they must. They must so that you can be all you can be. You can get to be all you can be if you haven't lost. You just can't. That's the way it is. I have no other explanation for you. That's just the way it is. <laughs> hey, <right>, well, <laughs> Brian, can, can we do a quick review? Yes. So we, we had three things going here. Yes. So today we spoke on starting over or a refresh. And we spoke on day one, on phase one of my program, The Four Hour Work Week. And self-sabotage is really the crown that we use that keeps us in a place so we can get any further. We self-sabotage before people come in and do it. And we do it through our mind, allowing our mind to dictate what happened, really and truly. And it leads us down a rabbit hole lots of times so we don't get to where we want to get to. Okay. We don't get to where we want to get to. And number three was just me showing you an instant boost, how you can build confidence by selling something right away so that you know you can truly, truly do it. You can truly run this business. You can truly grow this company. You've got to sell something. If you sell nothing, you don't have a business. If you tell me I'm waiting to get a business plan, I'm waiting to do all these things, I'm sorry. you got to go sell something. you got to go sell something. I tell people all the time, go sell something. We're going to work through everything, but you need to sell something. Like If you sign up for the four-day work week, and right now I'm just 
you'll just be on an email list and I'll tell you when it opens. I don't have a link at the moment. It really and truly, really and truly, you got to sell something while we were going through the program. You got to sell something because it makes you feel good. It makes you know you can do this. It mm. really makes you know, I can do this business. If you've been, been in business, and listen, for a long time, and you've been selling here and there, scattered, you know, everywhere, you're not consistent. That's why you're not selling, okay? That's first of all. To be able to sell consistently, you have to be consistent with yourself. You really, truly, you have to hold yourself accountable. And when the excuses are coming, you need to stop them. But I would warn you to sell. It's an eight-week program. You need to sell. You need to come tell me where you sell. I'm going to push you to keep selling while you're doing that thing. Because the first thing I'm going to ask you, what is your sales activity? What are you doing about sales? Because we're going to have a good segment where we really talk about your results, right? Right? We really, mm -hmm. truly, last one I talk about it, it's you have to have results. That's where your profit comes in. It's goal plus results equals profitability. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, guys, if you're looking to get into the program, you can find Coach Karen over there on Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. and other places under the Island Girl Hustle. Hustle. Yes. And you can definitely message me with your name and email, and I'll put you on the waiting list. And so, as soon as it's ready to go, you'll get the information and we'll move from there. And it's, I, I tell you, you don't want to get into next year. I know it's something long. When I started saying, I remember, Terry, I keep saying, you don't want to get to the end of the year. You do, do X, Y, and Z. We are halfway. This is the second half. Isn't this amazing? Right? Mm -hmm. And everybody who's doing great things is really happy right now. But the people who haven't been is really feeling sucky. And I don't want you to feel this way. Stop blaming. No shame. Just working towards what is it you do. Be hungry, guys. Be hungry. <laughs> okay, guys. So we want to thank everybody for tuning in. We uh, recognize that you could have spent your time anywhere, but you chose to spend it with us. So we want to thank you. We want to remind you that tomorrow, even though it's the 4th of July, we will be talking about Happy Healthy Habits with Robin Shamisa. Uh, someone did ask, will we be here for the 4th of July? No. Answers, yes, Karen. Uh, we will be here. So we want to give everybody a shout out who's enjoying the holiday. It's my understanding I should say happy. Be Canada Day. That was Monday. That was Monday. That was Monday. <laughs> was Monday. Okay. So, <laughs> a belated Happy Canada Week. <laughs> and we are going to party like it's the 4th of July. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, I just want to wish everybody a great day and encourage you to go to the front of your own line. Yes. Yeah. The best trick, the best trick guys are phenomenal because they're spending the 4th of July, at least the first part of the morning, um, still being committed and consistent. If you guys want to see com committed and consistency, the best tricks guys. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank you so much, Karen. You're we welcome. look forward to talking with you next week. And yeah. meanwhile, guys, we say, hey, have a great holiday and don't forget to go to the front of your own line. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Hmm.